Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to another TW 2020 video. You're on us today back on our Watcher series and it is the second instalment of the Death of the Territory mod. When it starts in 1983, we've moved over another two years to 1987 and uh, yeah, there's quite a few interesting findings that we're going to have a, a fuller look into over the course of the video. Now next week will be uh, the Peaking Tides 1991 mod that we'll be documenting. Um, but we will come back to this at one point, as I say, we'll drop into like the likes of 1991 and this one. But it's just kind of given like a lot of people an indication of mods that are out just now, where they'll kind of go two, three years in, four years in uh, with AI booking. And with that already being kind of recorded, it was really, really interesting findings, and I'm really intrigued to see where that gets to in 1995. So the next two years will send you my next race will be really really interesting but some of the things here be pretty interesting as i say this mod is not designed for tw 2020 it was a very poor conversion by myself so i don't see many people kind of jumping to use it but it was a fantastic mod in previous tws and yeah it's just it's wielded some interesting results so before we jump in just the usual as I say, if you want to buy a tw you want the various resources it's in the description below and if you want to get social, you know what to do, re thumbs up, etc. Re comment if you enjoy that. What you'd like to see, of course, I'm still happy to do these mods and watchers. What I'll say as well, probably from the mid of July, um, when F1 2020 comes out, I'll be doing a lot of races, obviously just career mode, which is going to leave my PC completely free. So again, anything you want to see done, any particular mod you want to nominate, uh, they'll get done and we'll have the videos live every every Wednesday. So no hesitation to do that, as I say. F1 gives me a wee break for the game, but as I say, if we can sum it, give people an idea of what kind of mods are like, it's all good. So now, anyway, let's crack on with this. So we'll start off, um, we'll go to news first with this one. So this is all the news from 1985. So just as we finish, because we were done up to April, sorry, like January 1985, so in that two year, you can see a couple of companies growing and dropping. WWE dropped, WWF sorry, dropped to medium. So did CWF. We also had New Japan rise up to a large size. But the big one, Georgia Championship Wrestling, who in my actual save that I've been doing, I've got like 11 million in the bank, out of business. Crazy, crazy stuff. They were out of business. 1986. Well, that was just a lot of shows getting cancelled by Glow because they didn't have enough wrestlers on the card. We also had a stop of the hostile attitude between New Japan and WWF. Just try to see there if there's any that have really closed. There seems to be a lot of shows cancelled by Glow. Uh, and Stampede changed their product as well to respectful wrestling. And obviously 1987, nothing as yet. Uh, if we go to... Workers that have joined the mod. So the year of 1985, with the likes of Rikishi in there, Brian Nobbs, Chris Benoit, Norman Smiley, Lex Luger joined, Nick Patrick was in as well. As you can see, you've also got Mike Jones, aka Virgil, Ultimate Warrior, Blue Demon Jr., Bam Bam, Shane Douglas, Missy Hyatt, Bruce Pritchard, one of a Sean, Sabu. Quite a lot of big names there, Vader as well. There's probably some I've missed out there. Teddy Long. And that's just in the year in 1985. 86. There was a wee bit more. And if we can just go through a couple there. Scott Putsky, Brian Pillman. Who else have we got? Ron Simmons is in there. Two called Scorpio. Everybody's favourite, Johnny Ace. Has also joined. And I'm pretty sure there was a big name by the name of... No, he's not debuted yet. He'll debut soon. That would have been Mark Catalos. It might have been a debut there, Lord, actually. And I might have covered that in the last video. But you'd run in Don Harris as well, just to name some other people. So quite a few big names in there. So it's a weird one in this mod. As I say, it's an absolutely fantastic mod if you were playing TW 2016. But with a conversion, it's not converted great over with the backstage area. So whether I'd recommend it or not. For this particular game, no, but if you're playing like TRW 2016 or even back to it, absolutely knock yourself out, go for it, it's really, really good. I'll continue my save until backstage area, just, I've had enough of it basically, as I click that again, as I always do in these videos. So in terms of the Power 500, we're just going to look at that 
kind of the top wrestlers here. So let's look at the awards as well. So Ricky Choshu has been the wrestler of the year. You can see so many stellar matches there for World Pro Wrestling and New Japan. Quite a few. You can see there are hundreds, a couple of 99s. So he's an absolutely stellar time. It's one of the ones as well where eventually, I promise, I will do a save where it's not just on popularity and it's just strictly wrestling because I'd love to get the kind of ratings and I would need that if I want to get the achievements. So we'll get that down the line. But just other guys in there. We had Takada. Magnum TA, Billy Graham was in there as well, Abdul the Butcher and Andre in there. Um, yeah, that was for 1986, 1985, Andre was the main man. Uh, also was in 84 and then there you had Kobayashi, Takada and Fujinami as well. In terms of annual awards, so you see Choshu and Andre the Giant for the two wrestler of the years. Tag Team of the Year was twice Takada and Choshu. Takada for Young Wrestler. Veteran, Abdullah the Butchers won it three years at the four and Billy Graham's won it. Female Wrestler of the Year twice went to Lola Gonzalez. So she's been really over in the US. She's now working, oh she's working with CMLL but she's over in the States. Has she always been over in the States? Well for the last year or so she has. Look at her career history. Is it under again? Job history, of course. She was with All Japan for a small spell in 83, but she's been at CMLL since the start of the mod. That's fair enough. So I don't actually that popular in the States. They must have got a good TV deal. Independent wrestler Terry Funk and Bob Backlund. Company of the Year was New Japan for the 8th time and then the WWF for the 3rd time. Most improved was JPUK, which is Joint Promotions, which is local promotions in the UK, judging by that, they get not bad, a couple of local promoters, 30 million dollars, the big daddy show. Match of the year, uh, two 100s, Kobayashi defeated Bob Burton Jr. by DQ at New Japan Excel fight in 1985, and Magnum TA defeated Adrian Adonis at New Japan Test of Enemies 1986, that could be some good names for some WWE pay-per-views in my, my save there. Show of the Year was Summer Action Series 2, that was by, it's not on the click, and All Japan Pro Wrestling's Platinum Series in 1986, won it in 1986, believe it or not. Piper won Manager of the Year for the second year, and then Billy Graham, so that's been a repeat of the first two years of the um, the Watcher. And your Announcer of the Year went to Gordon Soley for the ninth time, and for the first time since 1979, Vince McMahon wins it. And the Colour Commentator, dominated by Jesse Ventura. Referee went to Paul Morton and then Reggie Parks. So yeah, four different winners of the referee situation. Click that. Company Awards then. So, New Japan is the biggest in the entire world. Uh, we'll just go through their champions at present. Uh, $109 million in the bank as well, so they're pretty in a good position. Let's just see what's been run. They have a big gold belt is with the Cobra. The national tag is with Scott Hall and Stephen Petipas. The Super Junior Cup has now been used. The Junior Heavyweight is with Mashiro Chono. And the Super Grade Tag League has never been used. But yeah, they are dominating the world in terms of stables. The coming storm of Black Tiger, Bob Eaton and Angus Campbell. The pod, which has still been there since the last time. We'll try and cover ones that have been new to this. So, the regime. Fujinami, Woohoo McDaniel, El Solitario and Sakaguchi. And the spring were already there previously. So that's the, the AI stables that have been created in here. But New Japan just seem to be going strength for strength. Uh, over there, CMLL. Well, if we quick look at them as well with Chavo Guerrero Sr. and Hector Guerrero, the main men over there. In terms of their championships, we'll see what's been defended. The Campeonato de Mujeres, terrible pronunciation, that's with Marfa Valobis. She is a three time champion of that particular belt. The National Light Heavyweight is with Javier Linares. The National Tag Team with Liz Mark and Gran Apache. The Trios is with Babeface, El Signo and Hector Guerrero. The National Welterweight is with Blue Panther. 
the NWA World Light Heavyweight is with Atlantis, and the NWA Middleweight is with Villiano the Fub. Just a wee thing as well, if you do want to check the histories, because there's so much to do in the video and I don't want to just hold on that, please just press pause and take a wee look at it. Um, I don't want it. people going, oh, did you wait this long just to get through each one? So if you could do that, um, it'll give you an idea of the histories of each particular, or the lineage of each particular title belt. Should have probably stated that beforehand, so that's on me. In terms of their stables, we didn't particularly look at them in the last video, so we'll go through them all here. Uh, Emity is with Alfonso Dantes, Ultraman, and Chimaco Velas uh, Valaquez. I was going to say Velasquez, but there's no Z there. The Divinity is El Faron, Furza, Guerrera, and Jerry Estrada. The Order is a faction with Dr. Wagner, Cien Caras, Emilio Chárez Jr., Sangre Chicana, and Satoru Sanyama. And the Storm Raiders with El Sata. Tinoco, MS1, and Villiano the third. That's a three person gang, the Storm Raiders. 35 million, as I say, they're doing pretty well. It could be something where they're just massive, more so in their region, and they've obviously expanded deals to America, which has just gave them even more popularity. Big Time Wrestling's over in the UK, just to give you an idea of the kind of people in there Tony Sinclair, Vic Faulkner, and like Sister Lucas Stan Hansen as well, somehow. So that's quite cool to see. And then Al Japan in at fourth. And number five is the Championship Wrestling from Florida. So that's your biggest company in the States. 51 million in the bank. Eddie Graham is the owner. Dusty Rhodes is not just only the booker, but the figurehead. He's a major star. And in there as well, Blackjack Mulligan, Barry Windham, Jesse Ventura, and Ric Flair. We take a look at their titles. So, was this created beforehand? The floor, the nope, this was an actual belt. The Florida of the Bahamas with Bobby Duncan as their champion. The Florida of the tag team belts are with Giles Poison and Sailor White. Florida Television is with Johnny Mantell. The NWA Florida of the Heavyweight is with Jesse Ventura. And the NWA Southern Heavyweight is with Roger. Kirby, just 11 title reigns for American Dream Dusty Rhodes there. In terms of their stables, we have the collaboration of Igor Zatkov, Johnny Heffernan and Bobby Duncan, and the minority, which is Joss Leviuk, Neil Gway and Rick Link. So Vinny Mac, what have you done then? So 26 million. WrestleMania never became a thing because obviously I don't think it changes that, or I don't know if it's at least programmed to change that. So the booker was George Scott, the figurehead is still Andre the Giant. They have got Bob Backlund, they've got Kurt Henning in, they've got Negro Casas and Hulk Hogan, the Hulk star over in Puerto Rico, but maybe not reached the heights they would have so far. And if we look at his title history, never has become a WWF champion, so that's one thing that's changed. WWF. And our continental champion is Seeker. The women's champion is still vacant, so they've never had a women's champion since 1958. The world heavyweight champion, oh, that is very interesting turn of events. Own Heart won it in 1987 from Andre the Giant. So since the inception of the mod, Bob Backlund starts as champion. And since then, they've had superstar Billy Graham, Andre the Giant, Negro Casas, a second run for Andre, and now... Owen Hart. That was quite a nice surprise to see. Uh, the tag team champions are the Road Warriors. Road Warrior Hawk and Animal. A second title run for Hawk, because he previously had it with Tommy Rogers. In terms of the stables, the block was already there previously, or was it? Well, we'll say no, because January 1985 is kind of like we kind of started the sim then. So that's Pedro Morales. Steve Kerr and Ken Patera was a three man gang. The House of Truth was already there. The It Crowd was already there. And the Avengers, Ivan Koloff, Road Warrior Hawk, Road Warrior Animal, and Tommy Rogers. The last two companies we're going to take a quick look at are going to be Stampede Wrestling with Giant Haystacks leading the way. 
the likes of Keith, uh, Keith Hart, Jim Neidhart, King Kong Bundy as main people here. We'll just cut a look at their champions at the moment. The British Commonwealth mid heavyweight was with Clive Myers, previously that had with Shawn Michaels. The CSW International Tag Team is with Keith and Ross Hart. And the North American Heavyweight is with King Kong Bundy. And a quick look at World Class Championship Wrestling. Fritz Von Erich leads away. The Von Erichs are dominant as major stars. And their champions are Coco Beware as the American Heavyweight. Pork Chop Cash and Tank Patton as the North Amer uh, the NWA American Tag Team. Brass Knuckles is with Tank Patton. The Texas Heavyweight is with P.S. Hayes. The Television Championship with Jonathan Boyd. And the World Six Man with Kevin, David and Kerry Von Eric. In terms of stables in WCCW. The New Gods with Bill, David and Gary there. And the Von Eric's still with David, Kerry and Kevin. So the last thing I want to check is obviously there's a few names that we haven't really saw anything of, so it'd be interesting to see where they are in the wrestling world. If there isn't anybody, because this is going to pretty much go live uh, in time, before the next recording of anything of this, so let me know if there's anything you want me to check up and we'll see where they are in the, in the world of wrestling. So Shawn Michaels is with the WWF, so that never changed. Uh, if we could have a look at Shawn. And that's quite cool, he actually went AGPW Stampede, then did make his way to the WWF, so that's quite cool that he eventually made his way that way. And he was Stampede's figurehead at one point. Again, pretty cool. Scott Hall, went to Japan. The other one I wanted to check was... Mark Callis, so the future Undertaker. At this moment in time is with MACW. Uh, he won't have a picture under Mark Callis, but if he was Undertaker, a picture would spawn this picture back. Uh, yeah, he's been there since 1985, so since he came into the world two years ago, will he make his way to the WWF? Will he get over? Is another thing as well. And we saw him earlier on, but just an idea. Bret Hart, WWF. So he obviously left Stampede as well, and the Hitman is fairly over. He's going to not be dented in terms of where he got to, and he's a few places he's worked, but yep. Stampede to the World Wrestling Federation. So as I say, this will go live before I get the opportunity to go further into the save. So if you do want to let me know what kind of wrestlers you want me to take a look at as well, and when the next edition comes, it might be a few weeks, because I say we'll do two weeks of the Peaking Tides, and then as I say, any other kind of mod you want me to fast forward, but even real world, present day, uh, we'll be looking at that as well. So as I say, we initially done one with Killing the Business, There'll be one eventually with the Who's mod, there'll be one with Landexes. It's just done it one a week because obviously there's a lot going on in the channel. And um, I only do at the moment one race a week in my F1 league, which obviously will go up a bit more once the, the new game comes out. So, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this week. I was going to say history lesson, but that's going to delve into the past and an alternate universe. And hopefully, um, Peaking Tides, when it has a proper... Uh, it's not even a conversion, that's an actual mod, so that could be quite interesting to see what kind of developments there is. And there's two that change the course of history quite quickly. But we'll see that next week. So thanks for watching, much appreciated. Stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.